All right, we'll take a look here at one type of electronic tuner. This electronic tuner here, I have taped to the head of the banjo. That is not necessary at all to use this tuner. This tuner works on a microphone. As you can see, as I'm speaking even, it's picking up my voice and trying to figure out uh, how to tell me whether I'm in tune or not. So this is a microphone tuner, and you can put it anywhere within the vicinity of the banjo, and it'll pick it up through the microphone and tell you how it works. So the reason I have it taped to the headstock or to the head of the banjo rather is just simply for this camera shot here. So there's no other reason, just so I can get the strings and also the tuner in on the shot. Okay, so all these tuners, it depends on the make and the model as to exactly how they're laid out, but they all have the same basic idea. This one here, you'll notice the, a list of note names That'll tell you what note you're playing. So in this case, if I play the fifth string, I want it to sound like a G, so I'll play the string. And then I'll notice that, sure enough, there it's telling me it's a G note. Once that's established, then I can go ahead and take a look at this screen here and try to get the needle to settle right in the middle and that'll tell me that I'm right in tune. So if if this is telling me I'm playing a G, and then this is telling me where that G is in relation to being in tune, or maybe a little too high pitch or a little too low pitch. That needle's a little left to center, so I'm gonna tighten the tension until it's right in the middle. And you'll notice there are a couple arrows that'll both light up if I get it right in tune. So remember that with these tuners. I'll give you an example. If I go to tune my fourth string, it should be a D. Now let's say I, I'd hit it. You'll notice down here I'm um, getting a C note instead of a D. So that means that I'm lower in the musical alphabet than I need to be, so I need to raise the tension of that string until I can get that that D light to light up. Hear the pitch going up. And there it is. See the D light up? So now that I see the D, I know I'm, I'm dealing with the right note. Now I can keep the tension going up, keep raising the pitch until I get that needle in the middle. There we go. Like I said, other tuners that work under this uh, microphone method will work similarly to this. They'll probably have a slightly different layout, but you usually have a screen with some uh, with a gauge of some sort, and usually some lights to indicate that you're right in tune, and then some way to tell you what note you're playing so you know if you're tuning to the right note or not. All right, got a little shot of the headstock here. I'm going to show you how to use a clip-on tuner. Now, these tuners, this is one particular brand of clip-on tuner. I believe this is called Intelli brand. Don't know the model. Um, any style of clip-on tuner is going to have this function here, where you can clip onto a part of your instrument. And traditionally, that's right onto the headstock. It's usually the best place. This one, and many of these tuners have this adjustable function where you can spin the screen around to get it where you need it. I'm going to spin this around so it's facing you, and I'm going to lower the lighting a little bit so that maybe you can get a chance to see the display. Essentially what's happening on the screen is the same thing, this is in digital form, but the same thing that was happening on our microphone based tuner. When I play a note, we're going to we're going to get a reading from the tuner that tells me what note I'm playing. Right there you can see it says G. And then also there's going to be a needle. And again, I'll have to get that to settle in the middle of the screen. So right here, I think I'm a little sharp, a little high pitch. If I go too low, you'll see it moving to the left up the center line. 
Pitch gets too high, it goes up above. Again, these clip-on tuners, you just need to clip them onto any part of the instrument where they fit snugly. It'll pick up the vibrations, uh, but the most common place is up on the headstock. A lot of different makes and models. They all have a similar functionality, so hopefully that gives you a little clearer idea how this works. There's my fourth string. We'll give you one more example. Fourth string is coming up on a C note, so we're going to raise it up. Now it says D. So now I just got to get that needle to settle right in the middle. There we go. We'll give you a little demonstration on relative tuning, how to do that. So the idea with relative tuning is we're pretty much just tuning the instrument to itself. We want all the strings in tune in relation to each other. We're not worried about whether we're in tune with another instrumentalist. So you really just have to start with a string that you're pretty confident in. So let's assume that we play our fourth string. And we feel like it sounds pretty good to us. Sounds like it's in about the right place. Now we're going to tune the rest of the notes to that string. So the way we do this is we use what are called unison notes. You can get the same note in different places. So in this case, if I play the fifth fret on the fourth string, that should be the same note you get when you play the third string open. Hopefully you can hear the similarity there. Same note. Now let's suppose I'm out of tune. So I'm going to start on the fourth string, fifth fret. Now I want the third string open to sound the same. I want that note to be the same as the fourth string, fifth fret. It's a little different. We have and we have. What we have to determine is whether we think that note sounds right or not. Then as soon as we've established, as in this case, it's not sounding quite right, we should try to determine whether it sounds like it's too low in pitch or too high in pitch. This might take a little practice for you. You might need to, to develop your ear in this regard, but let's listen. That second note is, is a little too low. So we need to raise this note, the third string up and see I'm raising it up. Now those two notes match. Um, on the next thing we do is we move to the third string now that we have that in tune to the fourth string. And we're going to tune our second string now. So we'll tune that in relation to the third. We'll fret the fourth fret third string, and that note should be what the second string sounds like. Now it doesn't. We have, and then when I play the open second string, so again, that open string is a little, little low, a little what we call flat. So. I'm going to turn this key here and raise the pitch. Now I'm lowering it a little because I went too far. Now they sound pretty good, pretty much the same. A couple things here. One is make sure whenever you're turning your tuning peg, remember if you tighten it, it'll raise the pitch. If you lower it, it'll, or if you loosen it, it'll lower the pitch. Always make sure that the note is sounding when you're turning. You want to be listening the whole time. What you don't want to do is just turn the peg and then check the note. No, what you want to do is slowly turn it while it's sounding so you can guide it right into where you need it. So again, I'll put the B string out of tune, the second string, and I'll tune it again to the third string. Fourth fret, third string. Second string open. 
Because I want it to be but it's now it's closer to but notice I can always hear the note when I'm turning it that's good to train your ear and then also you won't end up turning it way too far in either direction if you do tune the note way too uh, with way too much tension, you might even snap a string in the process, and that's kind of inconvenient and can be a little scary when it happens. All right, let's move on with the process. Now we fret the third fret on the second string, and we want the open first string to sound the same. So again, they're not in tune, so I have to adjust that first string. I think this time the note is too high in pitch. So see what I did? Lowered it until it was approximately the same note that I heard when I fretted the previous string. Finally, after we've got those four strings tuned, we play the fifth fret on the first string. And our fifth string open should match it. And that sounds pretty good. All right, so that's relative tuning. Spend some time practicing with that on your own, and we should be good to go.